Knight here again. Um, just want to talk a little bit about a set of plans. We have a paper set of plans here today. Um, we just want to go through a whole series of maybe navigating our way through the set. So what we have here is we just have a cover sheet. Uh, it's, it's invaluable. Um, we can uh, see, uh, it's like an index in a book basically. Uh, typically they'll start, uh, architecturally they'll start with an A and they're numbered throughout the set. It tells us what we can expect to see on each one. So super valuable. Um, lots of people will, will maybe just tear this page off if they're in the field um, just for reference so they can reference through the plan better. But also since this is in a very large set, um, we've got what, nine, ten pieces pages here, um, you can sort of commit it to memory right away, but it's a quick reference, like an index, so it works out really well. So if I want to find something simple like, oh, where's the roof plan, I can just scroll through really quickly and I can get to, you know, A4, and then, and then away we go. It saves me from flipping through the pages, hunting for things, having this off to the side. So that's one thing that we, we often see uh, peeling through until we get um, comfortable with what we're doing. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to just use um, our, our drawing list or our table of contents just to demonstrate an example of how we want to find something. So if I'm looking at, um, so let's just say the main floor plan on, on, on A2, um, right here, so I've got my main floor plan view, and I want to see in section, I want to see in section what is going on on this side. So I want to see in section so I can actually visualize myself standing on the floor and looking in that direction because the arrow tells me that's what I'm going to do. Um, I can find a reference on there. It tells me to go to sheet A5 to do that. So we can just quickly navigate to A5. Um, we get that from the index or just committed it to memory because there's only 10 pages here. And then I can see myself standing on the floor looking in that direction. So that's just a quick little way of navigating. Um, and it's kind of universal, so it goes frontwards and backwards in some ways. Um, you'll notice there's some other things on here. Uh, there's another section on here. That what that'll do is it'll show me, it'll slice the house in that direction. I've got a little arrow here that shows me, so all I need to do is just flip to page A6 because that's the little arrow tells me to do. And now I've got the house sliced in this direction, um, exactly from that, that line. And it just continues on that way. I can go back to A5 and see the previous view. So I uh, just want to do a little bit of close-in work just to um, sort of navigate through the plan a little bit um, to uh, take advantage of what's presented to us here and um, talk a little bit about sort of the paper language that we like to talk a, a little bit about. So I'm just going to go to the uh, the main floor plan, take a look on here, um, and again just to sort of revisit those sections just a little bit. Um, we can see we've got the whole main floor plan here, it's dimensioning, there's a ton of information on here so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit intimidating at first but if we break it down it, it becomes quite simple. So again our sections are these heavy lines that run through, we can see our section head and our direction of view, um, so if I were to go um, to uh, sheet A5 and look at section number one, I will see the house sliced right through this direction looking that way. And also um, there's another uh, line this way, uh, cutting the house uh, lengthwise and that view is on A6 and that's detail one. So we'll just go there quickly as well, we'll go to A5 and there's the view that we're seeing. So if you look very closely you can see it's sliced um, the floor system, it's sliced right through the stairs. Uh, that's where that heavy line was on the main floor and more floor system. Um, interestingly as well, um, things in the background are, are generally a lighter line weight than the things that are actually in the view where the, where the cut is. And obviously we don't see anything this way off the page because the view is looking that way. The other interesting thing, uh, interesting to note as well, um, quite often these sections are put in places of great detail. So the stairwell, obviously, um, so when they drew it, they felt it was important. They've gone through the window, so we can see that detail. Um, they've gone through the front, and this is, uh, sometimes confuses us a little bit. Uh, the front actually jogs in here, um, all the way to the roof and all the way down to the foundation. So the house, if we look um, over on the left side or the right side, is 28 feet uh, wide um, from outside to outside the uh, sheathing. Um, but in here it's not. So when we look at the section we have to be careful. If you look down here you've got 28 feet wide but it's out here past 
the footing that's highlighted, that's because the house has been sliced in that indentation or jog on the foundation, if you will. Um, a good set of plans will often have these lighter weight lines that are not super obvious, but if we look very closely, we can see in the background where the full width of the house appears and same with the footing down here as well. So um, all sorts of things that we can, we can do with sections. All right, so just want to spend a little bit of time on the main floor, um, talk a little bit about dimensioning. Um, so it's a little bit easy maybe to start around the outside. We can see the outside footprint. Um, so this building is, is 50 foot, um, six inches long by 28, um, uh, 28 feet, zero inches wide. Um, you'll notice that the larger dimensions tend to move to the outside and as we move in um, these dimensions are brought in a little bit closer and notice, notice that the outside dimensions they don't accumulate. Um, one of the reasons that, 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 that this is done and the folks that are going to build a house prefer it this way they can kind of opens them up they can um, find these window locations uh, things like that a little bit easier from any direction so from for instance if the uh, framer wants to place this window or we want to describe where this window was placed we can go five foot four inches from outside to the center of the window and as we previously discussed in, in other lessons we like the dimension to the center of the window um, in case the window size changes or the, the rough opening of the window changes a little bit from the actual window size. Um, this set of plans has window sizes drawn directly in their locations as opposed to having a schedule that would maybe appear over here on a, uh, in the legend or maybe on a separate sheet to describe that. Um, our interior dimensions, <clears throat> excuse me, um, not everything on the plan is necessarily um, dimensioned directly. Uh, in it's, a lot of it is dimensioned indirectly. Um, as an example, um, if I'm looking for uh, the inside of, of this closet, for instance, it's not measured exactly in the middle to the, from the inside of the face to the, to the inside of the back. It's actually out here on what we call a string dimension that comes all the way from the outside of the sheathing to the to describe this notch, it, it comes over this way, um, seven foot nine and a half from the outside of that wall to establish this wall. Um, three foot two and a half um, brings us from the, uh, the hallway dimension. Um, but where we can get the inside for that closet is right here, two foot four from the outside face to the inside face. So if you wanted to describe this, um, we know that we can just subtract uh, three and a half inches because we know that these are two by four walls. Um, and we know that they're um, three and a half inches wide, so that would we can get our interior dimensions by doing a little bit of math that way. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about um, dimensioning to outside uh, framing in other video, and just sort of see it on the plan here. Um, we've got a dimension here in this uh, bedroom number one, um, nine foot eight and a half inches from the outside of this. Uh, two by six wall that runs um, through in between the two bathrooms um, to the outside. So if we can imagine ourselves being in here, standing on that floor, um, obviously this doesn't do us a lot of good because the framer wouldn't be able to measure to outside. So that's where the thickness of this wall becomes um, very important. Um, in this case, um, we know, <coughs> excuse me, that the exterior walls are uh, two by six. Um, it'll be in a specification somewhere, but also it's kind of shown graphically as well. We look at a lot of these interior walls, they're all pretty much similar with the exception of, I think, just maybe two. Um, one here, and it happens to be labeled as a two by six wall. If we visually look at it, it's the same thickness of, as the exterior wall. Um, we know that it is actually technically not. There's a little bit extra, but that wouldn't show up graphically. Um, and then our only other uh, two by six wall is over here. Oh, there's a third one here as well. It runs through there. So just a little bit of time, a little bit of studying, a little bit of patience. You can kind of tell the difference between the thicknesses. Okay. Um, but in any case, um, so if we want to establish where that wall is with a line on the floor, maybe you're measuring in here. Um, you do have to subtract that exterior wall to place that there. Another important thing um, to note, and that's um, the way the plan is cut. Um, it's probably cut at about four feet. Now, to have, don't want to confuse anybody with, with these sections um, that we've talked about previously, but really this is kind of a section in a way if you think about it as well. So we, don't, we know there's things above and we know there's things below, but normally when a main floor plan is drawn, 
it's cut so we can see walls and doors, um, not necessarily other things. That's why this suggested, suggested kitchen cabinet layout is in a lighter tone and a lighter shade. Um, these things often change in residential construction, um, but they are shown lightened. Um, the other thing that we um, can note with that as well is the overhang on the house is shown by this dotted phantom line here. Um, it's not in the view because again, this is probably cut at about four feet off the top of the subfloor, um, but it's just sort of showing us where it is. And there may even be a note um, telling us what that overhang is. Sometimes there is, sometimes there, yes, right here there is. It tells us that it's two feet um, from the outside of that wall um, to the outside of the overhang. So I just want to take a little bit of time looking around inside a little bit more at the doors. Um, it's interesting that they're um, shown graphically, they're suggested directions of swing. Uh, in other words, this, this door swings that way, um, it could swing the other way. Uh, this one's a little bit of a tough one to decide on just for whatever happens on this countertop and what happens on that countertop. But nonetheless, they need to be drawn one way or another. Um, further to note is their sizes are um, illustrated directly where the door goes. Um, so over here, for instance, we have a little closet with a, with a bifold door. Um, these are the ones that fold up to one side. Um, in this case, it, some of them fold to one side and one, the rest of it folds to the other. And the sizes are just given and suggested swings and which side the, uh, the bifold is stacked to is all given that way. Um, exterior as well. So that's really interesting to note. Um, it's just written right directly on the plan, okay? Um, there's an option to that. If we just quickly switch to another plan here, um, we can see that these door swings um, are all suggested and door types are suggested as well. Um, but the other thing is we've got a little bit of a legend here. Um, so we, instead, rather than having the door size written right on the plan, um, we've got a little D4 here, which refers to a window and door schedule. In this case, it's right in the legend, super convenient, nice and handy. Um, at other times, it could be um, on a separate sheet with some specifications and, and or constructability notes. Um, but if we come back here and we look at our D4, oh, go, what's, a, what's a D4? There's a few of them around the plan. Um, so we can just zip over here, we'll find D4. Um, it will tell me how many of them I've got. I've got six of them. And in this case, this plan's in metric. Um, it gives me the um, size, um, 760. That'll be its width and its height will be um, uh, 2030. And it tells me that it's a swinging door as well. Um, there's some other things on here. It denotes bifold doors, um, the exterior doors, garden doors, things like that. Okay, so general notes, um, window and door schedule, and just refer to um, with these little uh, notations.